Hey everyone and welcome to another Kirby video. In this video I want to show you a few tricks about our blocks field. The blocks field is a really powerful way to edit rich text content or rich media content and it is a really cool tool for your editors in the panel but it is also very customizable and you might not know about all those options yet. So this is what I want to do in this video. I've already set up a new about page here and um, I created a really simple blueprint for it with just a bunch of fields or with just one field so far and it is the blocks field as you can see here type blocks and this is how it looks if you open it up. It doesn't look really powerful at first because it's empty so far but what we can do now is we can create individual blocks to build rich content. Let's get started with our default set of blocks. Um, this is a bunch of blocks that we thought might be useful for you and let's start with the heading. Hello world. And from here on we can add additional blocks. So now we could say we need a bit of text down here. Let's fill in a bit of text. Dummy text. And we can add a couple options to our text or format that a bit and then let's keep continuing with more blocks so we could add an image block and upload an image here add some alternative text maybe add a little caption Oh, I'm so creative again with all the dummy content. But this is basically how you use it, right? So you um, arrange blocks, you add blocks below each other, and then you can move them around. You could say, okay, this should go up here, or it should be below the text. Well, maybe I just liked it how it was before. And just like this, you are editing content, you are creating really um, beautiful pages that are easy to edit for your editors but also and that is the most important part about it um, leaves you with structured data so all that is stored now in the content file for this about page is JSON and we will have a look at that in our content folder we go to the about folder and here's the about txt this is how it looks it will store this json as an inline string so it's not super readable at first we can quickly fix this just for the sake of this demo by using the pretty function and this will make it a bit easier for us to explore what is in this field so once you've added this pretty fun uh, pretty mess um pretty option here you have to resave the page and then afterwards you will get readable JSON in here. This is a JSON object um, for each block so you basically can read it right away so you have a content um, part where content is stored for each block so in this case we have the level for the headline then we have the text for the headline we have a unique ID um, blocks can be hidden or not, so this is the toggle for that one here, and then we have the type. Down here is our text block with some additional PHP for the uh, PHP HTML for the formats, and then down here is the image block with a reference to our image file, um, with the alter alternative text that we've added and the caption as well. So you can see, all of this is not just like one big blob of HTML it is really structured finely structured data and that is really important because this is what gives you additional options now to work with this content and this is exactly what this video is about now now I want to show you how to customize the HTML for it if I go to the page nothing is on there yet I haven't created a usable template so far so that would be the next step in our templates folder I will create a new well I could actually copy and paste this file here start with this uh, rename it where's the rename option to about so now this will be loaded instead of the default template. we can close this one and now we have to get our blocks into our template somehow 
as you can see in the blueprint, the field has been called blocks. So we also need to use that in our template and go from page blocks and let's see what this does. If we simply echo the field, we get the content. So that would be the JSON, which is not really usable. This is not what we want. So we need to turn it into HTML from here on. The easiest way to do this is to add the two blocks field method. What the two blocks field method does is it takes that JSON um, and it turns it into a blocks object or in a, into a blocks collection better. A blocks collection with individual block objects for each block. And if we echo that, we turn this into a bit of magic and just convert this entire collection of blocks into HTML again. So now you can see we have the HTML for our blocks and we can start working with this and style this. I, this is an unstyled uh, page so far. I haven't added any CSS to it, but you can see how this could now be styled from here on. Um, and so far you have to be happy with whatever HTML we deliver you for the blocks. To quickly demonstrate that this is now fully um, customizable as well from the content side, we can rearrange this quickly, save it, go back, and now blocks change its order or their order. And we can also use one of the options, the hide option, for example, to hide individual blocks, show them again. Everything that you would expect from a block editor is now also visible in our templates. So this is cool. But as I said, you have to be happy with whatever HTML we give you. We try to keep this really simple. Oh, I see a bit of an issue here. Let me quickly remove something for you to not get confused because I'm. this is something from the preparation for this video. Going back here, now this is the HTML that you get. It starts at, at the H2 here, and then you get a P for the, um, for the text block. And then down here, you get a figure for the image block. This is the HTML that we provide out of the box for each block. Um, we try to keep this as minimal as possible, but it might not be the kind of HTML that you are looking for for your blocks. So maybe you need more control in terms of CSS classes. Maybe you want to apply semantic CSS to it, or you, you're using something like Tailwind and you want to have custom classes for every element. You wouldn't be able to do this right now. How do we get down to the HTML for each block? That's the big question at this point. Going back to the template, what we can do right out of the box is we can loop through this collection of blocks. So what I said before is two blocks would turn the JSON in our field into a collection of blocks. And this means we can loop through this collection with a simple for each loop. That means here it would turn everything into, a, into block objects. And then we can further work with those block objects. If we want to do exactly the same thing that we already had right now or before, we could now echo each individual block object and that would do the same thing that we had before. It would give us the HTML that we had before, the prepared HTML for each block. Again, this is not really what we're looking for. So one way now to further customize this it would be to use wrapper diffs, for example, or wrapper elements of your choosing to give you better access in terms of CSS selectors. So for example, we could have one big wrapping element here called blocks. And then for each individual, individual block, we could have another one called block. This would give a bit more um, control than before. You can see now we have the big wrapping blocks element and then inside we have an individual block. And now to be able to style the block HTML for each individual block type, it would be cool to have an, uh, a selector option for um, per type. The block object comes with a couple built-in methods and one of those methods is the type method, which gives you the type of block. 
that we are using. You could do something like blog heading here, or I like to use data attributes for this, where then just fill in the type of the blog. And now going back to the inspector, we can see now we have the data type heading, data type text, data type image. This already gives us a lot more flexibility in terms of CSS um, to style individual block types. But at this point, we still might not be happy with the HTML that we get inside the block. So the, the H2 here, maybe we need to apply additional classes here, or we need to apply additional classes here. That could totally be true. Um, and one way to solve this now would be an if clause. So in here, we could use the type method, method again to select between different types. So let's say for the heading type, we want to have different HTML or specialized HTML for the heading, but the other blocks we could keep as is. My custom heading gets a custom select selector and then some basic filler text here just to demonstrate this. Hello. Now, this would work and we could still get the text in here. This is done by using more block methods. So the block methods can access the fields that each block stores. If we go back to our um, about text, you can see that each block has a content um, sub block or whatever you want to call it where all the additional content for the block is stored. So in case of the heading, it would be the level and it would be the text for the heading. In case of the text block, it would be the, yeah, well, the HTML for the text block. And then down here, it would be quite a lot of additional fields for the image information, link to the file, etc. And we can access those. So it would be block level, block texts, block location, block image, etc. that we can now access for each block type. And as we just saw, heading has a text field, so we can use that text field and echo it here to get back to our original headline. So now we are basically at that point where we customized the heading with a custom class, and that's fine and it's working, but just think about all the block types that we have by default, and you might even want to um, customize them later or extend them later with, plug, uh, <laughs> with block plugins. So the list of block types that you would need to uh, adjust here with custom HTML might get quite long, and it would turn into a pretty nasty block of if and else if clauses that you would need to administrate here. A way better way to do this is to use our snippet system. And this is what we already do with blocks. When we echo a block, what this does here is it is it's, it's loading a snippet um, that is coming from our Kirby folder. So it's it's our Kirby folder already comes with a bunch of default snippets for each block type. And what you can do now is to overwrite those snippets. So I'm showing you how this, how this is done. And we can do this individually for each block type and we can just use the block types that we are happy with from our core Kirby folder and yeah, just be happy with what we, what we have there. To overwrite one of the snippets for a block type, we go into the snippets folder and we need a custom well, an additional blocks subfolder. And in that subfolder, we can create additional snippet files for each block type. So let's say in, in, in terms of the heading field, we need a new heading PHP snippet. And this one would now be loaded instead of the core um, heading snippet. If I store this now as an empty field, we can easily get rid of the headings that we already had. To demonstrate that this is working, if I just put something in here, you can see this is now being loaded and it has been used as the content for our heading block.
This is really cool because now we can do our custom HTML inside here and it is a lot cleaner to work with and a lot easier to, yeah, well, extend this custom headline, custom heading. How do we get access to the block here? Um, just like we did before, we still have access to the block object. And from here on, we can then access the fields or access the type method and um, yeah, just customize it like we did before in the if clause. And it's working as you can see, and we no longer have to deal with a messy if else if um, block. This is really cool because now we can adjust single snippets or single blocks, or we could override all the blocks that we define. And the best way to have a look at the default snippets that we provide is to go into the Kirby folder, go into config and into blocks. You can see there is a folder for each block. And if you go to the heading folder here, there is the heading PHP, which is the snippet that we provide out of the box for the heading. You can see it isn't really a, a lot more complex than what we are doing. This is a bit of common to uh, support IDEs. Um, it's not super important. And here we are using the heading level to create the opening tag and also the closing tag. That's the only difference so far. Uh, and then we also use the block text here. Let's have another look at the text snippet. So that would really just echo the text of the text block. So you can see the default snippet code for each individual block isn't super complicated. And you can basically just copy it from here and then create your own snippets and start from there and adjusting them. So especially if it comes to images or something, there's a bit more code involved if you want to link images or if you want to create captions below images or something like that. There is more code involved and you might want to start with what we already provide and start and extend it from there. So what you can totally do is you copy the file from our image folder, uh, from our, yeah, from the image folder in this case, and then you go to your own snippet folder and you paste it in there into the blocks folder. And then from there on, you can override whatever we define here. But the great part now really is about this blocks field that you have everything under control. Every little piece of HTML that each block creates can be defined by you, can be overwritten by you, can be extended by you. Um, it can be adjusted to your, fra to your favorite framework, to your favorite method of creating your front end code. And you don't have to be satisfied with what we deliver and then maybe find that it doesn't really ever fit the styling that you have in mind. This is, um, yeah, well, a quite extensive look at how you can adjust the front end part of the blocks field, how you can add new blocks here in the panel is a lot more intuitive to your editors than what you have to do as a front end developer. But as you've just seen, it isn't really hard to extend this and you don't have to get into some complicated um, framework or whatever. It really is just a bunch of snippets that you have to adjust. I hope this helps to get the best out of this field and turn it into a, to your own and create some really cool stuff with it. Thank you very much. Bye bye.